Hey everyone, I'm Julie. And this week on Quarantine Queens, we are giving you the mom lowdown on the classic 1985 movie, Ooh. Teen Wolf. Yep. We'll be guiding you through the movie watching process with curse word counts, offensiveness, cigarette smoking appearances, violence, <laughs> boobies, and the sexual innuendos that the 80s loved so much. This is the official roadmap to the exact times to fast forward, cover eyes, cough loudly over some questionable language. <laughs> Every week, we will pick a classic film and break down what's appropriate, what's borderline, and what's fun for the whole family, because there's no getting away from them right now. This week, Teen Wolf. It was a movie about a teen boy going through serious puberty. Voice change, chest hair, facial hair, forehead hair, sharp nails. Wait, no, it's not puberty. He's turning into a wolf. 80s heartthrob Michael J. Fox stars as Scott, an unpopular high schooler who is terrible at basketball until he turns into a wolf. And all of a sudden, he becomes the basketball team star player and he gets the pretty girl. Who knew being a wolf in high school could get you so far? I should let my mustache grow out. <laughs> This movie has an A-plus 80s cast. Aside from Michael J. Fox, we've got Jerry Levine. Look him up if you don't know the name because you'll know the face. And James Hampton, to name a few. James Hampton is the dad in all the 80s movies. He's got the soothing voice, the perfect hair, the gentle mannerisms. Classic, nerdy 80s dad. I was super excited to watch Teen Wolf with the kids. When we sat down to watch, I thought, okay, Michael J. Fox can do no wrong. This movie is definitely safe, it's PG, but how much guidance do we really need here? Well, ooh, it turns out a lot. What was harmless back then is not so harmless now. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Let's begin with the cursing. It's the least of our worries in this film. We've got Dick at 17 minutes, Bastards in a Goddamn at 19, a Jesus Christ at 32, and a Hell at 33. It's a smattering, they're not even the worst of words. Not one shit or ass. I didn't need to say that, did I? Let's ease into the next part, the relentless fat shaming. Good God, right off the bat, at four minutes, the basketball coach says, that fat kid's got a great arm. He's talking about throwing, not arm shape. Only a minute later, at five minutes, Michael J. Fox's character Scott scolds Chubb. That's the guy's name. Well, Chubby, but Chubb or Chubbs. For short, depending on what part of the movie we're in. Scott scolds him for not being on his diet because he can smell liverwurst on him. If you thought it was just in the beginning, there are some more, one at one hour and 20 minutes, where a basketball player on the competing team says, shoot it, fat boy. Oof. Next up, smoking. They went pretty light on the smoking. The only issue with it is it's done by the teens, so not exactly your best influence. Styles has a cigarette in his mouth at about 15 minutes in, but he's not smoking it. He's just using it to seem older, you know, so he can legally buy a keg of beer for a party. Which brings me to the party scene. At 23 minutes in, where pretty much all the teens are smoking and I'd say more than just cigarettes. You know what I'm talking this brings me to the underage drugs, drinking, and other bad kid behaviors section. I just made that up for this movie. There is underage driving, nah. There is a lot of car surfing to the Beach Boys tune, Surfing USA, at 21 minutes and one hour and two minutes. Can you say dangerous? They never get pulled over because no cops? I don't know. Let's just tuck that away as bad kid behavior. Styles mentions he needs a solid buzz at 40 minutes, and Scott, as a wolf, can sniff out a stash of pot, which he holds up in a baggie at 42 minutes. He could probably get away with those, you know, just say it's spinach. That's a body good. This brings me to the start of all the sexual innuendos, and a oh boy, do we have a lot. They're not only your face, though. Some of these will just be fun for you. Anyway, first thing that caught my attention, Scott's childhood friend's nickname is Boof. Boof. I'm not gonna say what it means. I'm gonna let you Google that one. Also, another subliminal one, maybe I'm reading into this, but the basketball team is called the Beavers. And there's a banner hanging up in the school that says, Beavers are the best. <laughs> I'm not gonna disagree. Let's get back to the teen party I mentioned before. There's a lot of underage drinking and smoking at the party. Okay, fine, you know, it happens. Honestly though, this seemed like more than a teen high school party. It feels like a party in the hills of LA where 20 something hopefuls go on to take up harmful addictions just to fit in. It's really something. I've never been to a high school party like that. At about 24 minutes, a girl and a guy at the party are in their skivvies, tied together and covered in whipped cream. Booth and Scott are making out in the closet at 18 minutes. Scott is turning into a wolf during the closet makeout. 
Now, Boof doesn't know this. She just thinks that he's getting really rough, like in a, in a passionate way, so she smacks him across the face. Go, Boof! We see later that she has giant rips down the back of her shirt and blood on her back. These aren't the rips of long nails. These are the rips of a chainsaw that went out of control. It wasn't a moment of passion. It was an attempted murder. But don't worry, Boof seems fine with it the next day at school. Hmm. In 26 minutes, Chubby has to eat. Of course he does. A bowl of jello that was poured down a girl's shirt. He seemed to really enjoy it because, well, food and boobs. Last note on this party, there's a weird young woman wearing lingerie in it and helping Styles host it. I, all I can say is just weird. You gotta watch it for that one. At 56 minutes, Scott's blonde crush, Pamela, is in her dressing room for the school play. I'm not sure what kind of school this is. Dressing room? Scott comes in and she drops her towel, oops, from the shower she took, and she's in her bra and panties. She removes the bra, okay, fine, bra's more comfortable, I get it. On a positive note, we only see her back, but there is a little sad boob at 56 minutes and a half. They're kissing, she calls him an animal, they duck out of the scene, and we assume what happens next, especially when the principal hears Scott howling all the way from outside of the parking lot. On school grounds. Inappropriate, kids. At 58 minutes, there's a hyper-sexualized bowling scene. Who knew bowling could be so sexy? <laughs> Those shoes, right? <laughs> In this bowling scene, there's a lot of bending over and butt close-ups and sexy bowling help from Scott, you know, oh, let me help you. And there's some kissing at an hour and about 11 minutes, but after all the other stuff, that's a breath of fresh air. As for violence, nothing here. There's one punch at a school dance, but it's followed by a very ripped shirt on a pretty fit guy. I wouldn't fast forward through that. Mm. Moving on to racism and other insensitivities. First, it's important to point out that most 80s movies were not diverse, and they were not diverse to the point where blondes were always the pretty popular girls, and brunettes struggled to get attention. Beyond that annoying trope, there is one black actor in the entire movie, and his nickname is Lemonade. I think I need a drink after that. The next offensive moment is a doozy. At about 40 minutes, the word fag is used three times. Okay, we don't use that word. If we do, it's solely about British cigarettes, and honestly, I'll just say cigarette. Thank you very much. Anywho, your kids probably don't know the word, I hope, and it may just fly right over their heads, but if they do know it or they notice it, it might be time for a serious talk or just fast forward or start doing the Fortnite dances to distract them. I've done that many times. It doesn't work. To sum it up, Teen Wolf is a PG-rated movie that requires the actual G from you. According to Common Sense Media and Parents, it's 13 plus, but what I found most interesting is kids are saying 14 plus. Seems like the kids are a little bit more aware on this one. It's got a decent lesson, which is be yourself, but like wolf you, but not too wolf you. More average you, but better than average you, which you'll be better than because you're being real you, which wasn't the you before. It's better you. So don't be you, be better than you or something. Also, do not be fat, brown-haired, gay, or black. It was entertaining though. And that is it for today's Quarantine Queens. I'm Julie, and stay tuned for more 80s movies reviews. And of course, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this video. Go Beavers!